Every stage starts with you. If you wanna be a speaker, speak every day. So first, hone your craft. Know what you're gonna come with. Know who you are so you know what stages you're gonna go for. Second of all, you have no speaker experience? Start running your own virtual events, whether they're one day workshops with the people that are your, your ideal client, your right fit clients, so you get really comfortable doing this. Get ready. We're going to learn from Danielle Maurer and this woman is absolutely amazing. She's a business implementation coach, she's an event organizer, but I also truly consider her as a good friend. And there's no better way to learn how event organizers pick speakers and therefore how you can easily get booked. It's a partnership when you step up on stage and you have to remember that whether it's a speaker for your stage or you're the speaker for somebody else's, this is the opportunity that two things can happen. You can either wreck their brand or they can wreck yours. So let's be respectful and work together and be efficient. Welcome to Lori the Podcast and I'm your host, Laurie, and I'm super excited you're here to join me on my public speaking journey, finding out what the most impactful way is to get your audience into action, your messages worth sharing, and people need to hear it now from you. So, you ready? Let's go. Welcome, Dee, to the podcast. I call you Dee because somehow I have a hard time pronouncing your real name. So, without further ado, would you please tell the audience today who you are? Hi, I'm Danielle Maurer, and I am a business implementation coach. That's very short, a business implementation coach. And we know each other for a while. That's why we are having fun together a bit before the podcast and now. But what I do know about you, Dee, is that you are uh, running a lot of challenges, online challenges for entrepreneurs, and that you are a lot of times in the role of an event organizer. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Because I think it's very intriguing for the listener to know, okay, as a speaker, you you want to speak, right? And it's really beneficial to know what different parts of the speaking industry want from you. And you as an event organizer, putting speakers on stages, we just want to know a bit more about how you make decisions to get there. So as an event organizer, what do you actually do? So some people call them challenges. Some people call them virtual events. I like to call them live launches. Um, but it's really education-based marketing. And it is, for me, the best way anybody can own their own platform and their own stage and connect really with their audience in a very intimate, personal way. And there's nothing quite like it. So I organize them, meaning that I map them out, I teach people how to do them, and I actually host them for people, which is how you and I got together in the very beginning where we did one with uh, 13 plus speakers. So, you know, whether you're speaking on someone else's or you want to run your own, there is really no better way to be international immediately and connect, have your own platform, build authority. And while I know the industry says, get to know, like, and trust you, I say it a little differently. I say that if you do this right, they get to know, love, and trust you. And you get to have fun along the way. Oh, so that's I love important. that. I love how you say that. I often say you skyrocket through the no like and trust phase, but let's reframe it to the no love and trust phase because like real connection, I always say public speaking is an emotional journey, right? Like if you create that love, that connection, then people just want to work with you or be around you, right? And I see we can go two different phases. The one is that you're calling out is as an entrepreneur, if you want to speak on stages, you can create your own stage. That's a really intriguing right. thing. And the, on the other side, it's like, okay, there's a lot of international online virtual events that you can be a speaker on. Let's dive into the second one for a moment. Um, being at the back end of a lot of challenges and a lot of events, how do you feel that you choose what kind of speakers will be speaking on these events okay so when i look at an event and let's just assume you are my client lori and you want to run an event and you want to have speakers so i need to understand number one who is your audience and what is the goal of your event what no one wants to do trust me but no one wants to do is to pick a speaker 
who's going to come onto your stage and attempt to fish your own clients out from underneath you or contradict your own messaging. So that's the first no-no. I've seen that go and it's like right in front of your face. And then you're sitting there as the host like this. And you don't want to do that. Mm -mm. So you want to pick the speakers that complement what you do. Don't contradict and are supportive. They're not exactly what you do. They're just a part of what would enhance what you want to do. So Lori, you are brilliant at teaching people how to speak and create their speech. But maybe a speaker for you would be somebody who would walk in and teach confidence, courage, so that they could step up on the stage, so that you can focus on what your real inner gift is, your true passion is. That would be complimentary. You're not going to pick somebody who teaches them how to create their own speech and then says, you know what? That's really nice that Lori said that. Don't listen to her. Listen to me. <laughs> that would be awkward. So <laughs> yeah, that would be, that very, would be very awkward. You would be sitting there like this. Okay. The other kind of speaker that you could pick, Lori, would be how do you go and find those stages for you? And they teach the actual process of how do you book that stage? Because you're teaching them to prepare. So whatever kind of an event that you're going to run virtually or in person, make sure that one, they're not going to sell from your stage. You know exactly those are clear instructions that they compliment you and they don't contradict you. And I would also pick a speaker who has a following. Oh, this is interesting. So we're looking here at the more strategic part, right? And I'm looking from the oh, perspective yes. of, of the speaker. And this is very interesting. The perspective of the speaker and you're thinking from the perspective of the challenge owner. So what could a speaker do to be more interesting for the event organizer? Because it's what I'm hearing is, okay, you want to add value. And at the same time as a speaker, you really want to speak. And it's not, it's, I, I can really, really think with the speaker here is like, well, I don't want to steal clients. I just want to want to inspire people. And the more stages, the better. So how can you as a speaker be more appealing to uh, an online event organizer? Oh, absolutely. Be easy to work with. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't be difficult now. But understand the audience. So if I come to Lori and I want to be on her stage, which I'm on right now, I want to know from Lori what best serves her audience. And I want to call my audience that needs Lori as well. So when I step up, I don't want to be all fluffy. I want to, I want to motivate. I want to inspire. But I also want to give tactical takeaways, keys, gems, golden nuggets, whatever you call them, for her audience to use right now. Because the more value I provide to Lori so that she's the rock star, it's her stage, the more Lori's going to want to choose me out of maybe 25 others. And when I can tell Lori that I have a following of 30,000 people, she says, I'm sorry, what? And she says, ding, ding, because now I'm helping her grow her reach and her message reaches more people, sometimes as speakers. We look for stages and we think, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of it? And that's the wrong approach. The approach is, what can I do for you? How can I best serve you? It's kind of like that karma. The karma that we think. What you put out, you get back. So if you go in with an intent of, what's in it for me? What am I going to get? And not only will Lori sense that or the stage owner sense it, but you're not going to get something back. Because we've got to give to get. And we have to give with no strings attached. And we have to give from our heart. And when we do that, you will capture audience along the way. You will capture what you really intended for, which is for people to stay following the host like Lori and maybe come follow you as the guest. So it's all about how do you fit that stage if I go speak on someone's stage, I have about 10 different things, 12 different things that I can speak on. What I choose is based on whose stage it is and what is the most value to them and to the audience. 
Yeah, this is super, super interesting. Coming from the place and how can I serve others, right? Like you want to talk, you want to speak your message. Um, so how can you, and, and oh, that's what I wanted to add actually, is uh, I also think it's it has a lot to do with being super transparent about it, mm -hmm. right? Like sometimes you can decide, you know, I am coming, I, I only want to go on stage if I can sell something. If I can promote myself or my, my platform or my service or maybe my social media, you know, and that can, that can be something that's really nice if it's, you know, set up front. I one time, like this is a real story, dude. I one time um, had this sequence where I was interviewing people every single week. And then I, and then I didn't know yet what you're saying is that you want to uh, make sure that you add value to each other and not say things that are different. And I didn't know that yet. So I invited another speaking coach and on my stage, online stage, he was completely selling himself. And that was completely not my idea of this interview. It was, com it was meant to be a conversation to share knowledge. And then this person started speaking and we're like, oh no, that was not cool. And for me as an, as, as the organizing party, I learned that I uh, have to uh, communicate better what what the intention is but i think as a speaker it's also your responsibility to tell exactly what you are going to do and what your intentions are to see before if it streamlines and not that it kind of like blows out in the in the live moment because people feel the energy right that's what you said too it's like people feel it so if there's some awkwardness they will feel the awkwardness so i love that and you said um and i i think that's uh, that's worth uh repeating is as a speaker, you want to be easy to work with. And what I'm hearing now from you is that means that you um, don't demand you yellow M&Ms only. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be interesting on an online summit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so can you tell a bit more about it? Like I see the M&Ms, I see the intention of how can I help you? What are other things that speakers can do from their side? to be easier for organizers to pick? Oh, easy. Um, and I'll give you a real example right now. So I'm set up to do a virtual event in June on someone's stage. So the host interviewed me to make sure that what I would say would serve their audience. So I asked those questions. Do we sell from the stage? What, it, what is your feeling on that? Um, who is your audience? What are they looking for and what stage are they at? So then I knew I picked the perfect thing. But then that organizer has, I need headshots by blank. I need this by blank. I need this by blank. So you know what I do? I give her everything she needs, not as the alarm is ringing. I give it to her early because I understand that as an organizer, you're chasing. It's like herding cats to get everybody who wants to be on the stage to deliver what you just asked them for. Then be on time for your speaking part. Do everything that they've asked for and ask this magic question. What else can I do to serve you? They're under stress. They're looking at a ton of pieces that they're trying to put together. And sometimes as a speaker, we're only thinking about our part. Why well, sent them an email? Why didn't they just answer? So let's have empathy and put ourselves and look through their lens and make it as easy as possible without the demands. And if you have an expectation, you need to bring it up and have that conversation, just like you said, Lori, right up front. So there's no surprises and there's no disappointments on the other side, whether it's the host disappointed or you. You don't want that. So it's, it's a partnership when you step up on stage and you have to remember that whether it's a speaker for your stage or you're the speaker for somebody else's, this is the opportunity that two things can happen. You can either wreck their brand or they can wreck yours. So let's be <laughs> respectful and work together and be efficient. If you've got due dates, give it to them. Don't be late and be prepared. Be prepared when you walk out on stage. Don't write it five minutes in the hallway i've seen that and then they walk out and they're like i um i and 
it just falls flat. So hit a home run because you may be thinking, well, I made their event amazing. But if you went out and you made it terrible, you just wrecked your own brand. So don't do that either. Mm. These these tips are so obvious and yet so often forgotten that it's so good to, to remind ourselves that this is important. Just a quick side note, you know what's really important as well? To keep practicing and building that public speaking muscle. And to do that, you can go to the description for the 14-day public speaking habit training that's completely ready for you, completely for free. Be on time! It's a, it's a starter, come on! But I can really see that from the event organizer, it's not... It's not the, 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 the biggest part of your mind is thinking about how can I make the life of the speaker easy as possible. No, they have like 120,000 things to think about and, and the speaker is just one. So I really like your approach of how can the speaker serve the organizer best in order for them to feel good about it. And if we, if we talk about this part of the process, Dee, then we're already in a stage where the speaker is chosen. Yes. What I'm very curious about is how do you find speakers? Is this something that they come to you, you go to them? Like, how, how does it work? Um, if it's my own personal stage and I'm selecting speakers, I will sometimes hand choose the speakers. I've seen them in other events. They're in my own community. I know what they deliver. I know how they are. But I also still interview them prior to them coming up. I, I clear those expectations like you spoke about in the beginning, whether we're friends or not. You have to. Business is business, right? And I do it not... Can I use, the, can I use a bad word? Not for being a tough ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. a big word. Okay. Because what I want is I want the speaker that I'm going to choose to be comfortable and the best versions of themselves and i want the audience to have the best experience too so it's not really about me or not trusting i want to set people up for success on both sides so i tend to hand pick and choose now if i'm working with a client i ask that client who do you know sometimes it's our peers that we've been learning with along the way. Oh, you know what? I know so-and-so. Okay, great. Tell me how they fit in. Tell me why you're choosing that person. I always go to the why. What are they going to bring to the table? Sometimes it's their clients because we should all use on a stage anywhere at some point, the students, the clients that we've walked with and made great impact with as our testimonial. That's still them speaking, right? We can't script what they say because it's not real, not authentic. So I like to put them on camera like this and you could do it in Zoom and let's just see how comfortable they are because if it's their first time ever doing this and it doesn't mean that you can't, sometimes is this thing on? Is this thing on? <laughs> Am I speaking? <laughs> and they freeze up. So I like to make sure that we build, if that's that person, let me build some reps into them to warm them up and make them feel comfortable. It's all in how much you believe yeah. in that speaker. So what I'm, what I'm hearing from this is that as an organizer, you're not only looking for, okay, how can the speaker best serve me kind of at, like as a speaker, you want to think about how can I help the event organizer, but it's also how can I make it as a speaker as easy as possible to pick me as a speaker because what you're saying out of your experience you often pick people that you already know so yeah so i'm kind of <laughs> answering my own question here but my question to you would be if if that is the situation if you if you hand pick people that are already in your surroundings then i mean you have a big network you just name a number like thirty thousand. let's say that's the that's the case why do you choose that one? You already said some things, but like what, what can speakers do? And that's the lens that I'm looking for from now. Like as listeners to this podcast, as people with amazing messages that they just want to share, they just want to be on stages. So what can they do to be more visible to, for example, you? Okay. So for me, 
There's a difference between the speaker who's like, hi, today I'm here to teach you about AI. Did you know AI stands for artificial intelligence? Or, hey guys, AI is the way to go. I got to show you how to do it. I'm looking for people who can connect, who are relatable, who are people who really move a room. And when I say that I know them, it could be because I saw them in another event. Now I may not personally have met them and now I'm reaching out, but this is what I do. This is a great tip. If you ever want to see, it's kind of like going to the zoo, right? We want to see the animals in the natural habitat. Let's just visualize that, right? We don't want the show. We don't want the rockets to come out and start with the choreographed show. What we want to see is people in their own element because we learn a lot. Um, I will attend one of their events or where they're speaking. And here's what I do. I don't watch the speaker. If I'm in a Zoom, I turn it on gallery and I watch the audience. If I'm in an in-person event, I hear the speaker, but I'm facing the audience. I'm looking for people leaning in, nodding their head, taking notes, because then I know you know how to connect with an audience. You know how to resonate. You're paying attention. That's what I'm looking for. I would rather take a less inexperienced speaker who connects and resonates than someone who comes in with the most brilliant speech on the planet. And that's exactly what it is. Because that's like watching a webinar. No connection. That's why I don't like webinars. There's just no connection. It's a flat recording. So I want, I want to see how people really react. Can they look over and say, hey, Lori, you all right? Thumbs up. And they see Lori go, no. All right, Lori, tell me about it. You got you to know. So I think that's really important to understand who they really are, not just the sizzle reel that they send you. Take a moment and go watch them live. Uh, I really like this, uh, Dee, because this is very a different angle than uh, other people talk about. They're like, you need the perfect sizzle reel. You need this. And what you're saying, yes, I love that for credibility, kind of, but I am I find connection way more important. And I'm asking questions uh, that have some sort of direction. And I'm very curious if we can go in this direction, because what I what I hear you say, yeah, let's go, <laughs> buckle up. Like, what I hear you say is that you go to events where they already speak. Now, you know that in order to go to events in, in your strategy, in order to come to an event to be able to speak, you need to be seen on an event where you are speaking. <laughs> so how can people that are not in that loop yet start to be recognizable for people like you, for event organizers who are picking, handpicking people that they see, uh, go to different events and kind of spot talent, right? Like you're like the basically the speaker scout. It's not a football scout, but you're a speaker scout. You go to the first events, you, you write their names out, you're ready to, to look for them. So how can you as a speaker join that circuit? Like where do you need to start? Okay. So Lori, give me one person, close your eyes. And give me one dream person you think you'd want in your podcast. Oh, a dream person. Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually like a super cool thing because I'm already going to interview him, but he is the world record TEDx holder who had the most TEDx's in the whole wild world. And he's going to talk about his experience to how to get on that stage. Okay. So let's just assume you didn't know him. Would you not go find out everything about him? Does he have a Facebook group? Does he have uh, social media? And go in and start commenting, dropping videos in order to go into his orbit. Yeah. And what I would personally do, that's a personal strategy that I used a lot. This is fun. Uh, is to find him on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. connect with him on LinkedIn and send him a personalized video. I'm very big on videos. Yep. Uh, I love enthusiasm. Uh, I love enthusiasm through words, but it really sparks and it becomes really real. If you know it's not a 
virtual assistant or a robot. It's just really the person making a really personalized video with your yeah. name using your stuff from your program, a uh, profile. Um, so that's what I do. Okay. So Which let's, is very interesting. Let's flip that switch. Now, you and I both know as legacy members for Dean Graziosi, we had somebody come in the room and teach, Chris Harder. Did you know Chris Harder beforehand? Absolutely not. I did not either, not personally, no. Um, but there was something in the room that resonated with me. So when I heard he was going to do a very private, um, like a mastermind, a round table, only 12 people. I don't know him to just be like, hi, Chris, it's me. It's Danielle Mauer. You don't know me. So what do I do to be that chosen person? I did exactly what you did. I went and I figured out where he was. I sent videos. Hey, Chris, don't know if you remember me. And I did the same thing with Dean, which is why out of thousands of people, he's able to say, yeah, I know who Danielle Maurer is. That I, I know that name, right? And then you end up in the room. So if you are a speaker and you have a dream stage, then you need to go find them and get into their orbit. I'm not saying be a stalker. It's a different thing. <laughs> okay. Don't do crazy things. Don't sell your kids. Don't send them <laughs> their kids through the mail. Don't, especially if they're married, don't write love notes. Like, like <laughs> let's not be that person. You're on a different list. But you could make sure that you're following them on social media. Be engaged. Send the video. Do responses of videos. And then ask. You know how many people forget to ask? Just ask. You may be told no in the beginning because maybe they think you're not ready. But come back and ask again. Ask what it takes to be on there. What are they looking for? What are you missing? People with stages, sometimes they run out of content. They're looking for someone new. So be that person. You've got to put yourself out there. I always like to say, don't be the mad scientist in the kitchen, right? Curing cancer and you're like, I got it. And you're shouting in your kitchen and nobody else knows. You have to put yourself out there. And it doesn't come like this. Hi, I'm Danielle Maurer. And I'm the most amusing speaker you've ever met. You need to book me. I'm in making millions. Doesn't work like that. I hope as a listener, you took for the people watching on YouTube, like I made so many notes. <laughs> I think it's always important to keep making notes. Also, if you already know most of the things. Um, because you anchor it in for yourself, you hear it in different language, and so many things that you said today are absolutely awesome. Uh, the and there's one last question that I want to ask is for those listeners who are okay. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes, and okay, I'm ready. I want to take control of finding the stages. I am going to find my dream stage. I am going to record a video, and I actually don't know don't know where to start like how do i find out like a lot of people that i speak to the want to do a tedx and that's the stage that they can think of um and a tedx i always say it's it's not so much ego wants to talk right it's <laughs> like a story worth sharing and even better explained a problem worth solving so if you want if you are the speaker or speaker in spade that, who wants to share their message and wants to now think of a dream stage, where can they start looking for those? Okay. Every happens, everything happens in the back door. Everything happens in the back door. Like you see these things and where can I Google those? Tell us, D, what, what, how can we do this? Okay. First of all, I, I would be wrong for not repeating a quote that was said, I think it's brilliant. Every stage starts with you. That's not the quote, right? Here's the quote, Trent Sheldon. If you want to be a speaker, speak every day. So first hone your craft, know what you're going to come with. Don't go applying and looking for things and then going, oh, now what? What if they want to get a promo kit from me, right? Know who you are so you know what stages you're going to go for. Second of all, you have no speaker experience, start running your own virtual events, whether they're one-day workshops with the people that are your 
your who, your that, your ideal client, your right fit client. So you get really comfortable doing this. Get ready. I used to vomit when I used to go out on big stages uh, with a keynote in the green room as they would mic at her. And here comes Danielle Mallard. And, and then I'd run back out and off I'd go. So get ready. Now, how do you find those? Well, does it have to be the biggest stage or the TEDx stage just because we know that's a stage? Could it be something in your local area? So if you teach business, could it be from a local business association a conference? Could it be someone else's virtual event that you apply for? Start small and, and build it up. Could you start on lives? Lives in other people's Facebook groups? That's a stage. It all depends on what we, we define a stage as. If you want to do podcasts, go look up the podcast that have your perfect people as an audience. And then go look up by the website. So for example, I'll just pick on Chris Harder, right? If I wanted to be on Chris Harder's podcast, I would go listen to his podcast. Then I would check out his titles. Does it fit me and my messaging? Yes. Check box one. Two, look up his website. Summer on his website is contact us. Guess what I would start doing? Contact us. If it's an in-person stage, then when you find the, the stage that you want, most of them all have meeting planners. And the meeting planner wants to know, are you going to hit them a home run and make the world easy? So, Make sure you tell a compelling story as you send things over to the meeting planners. That's who you're looking for. That's how you start getting on stages. And keep a list of the stages that you've been on. Those are your as seen as. Try, if you can, if you've done a great job, there shouldn't be a reason why the person who owns the stage or the meeting planner doesn't give you a little testimonial. But don't forget, those who own the keys, those planners, you could say, oh, I'd love to come back next year. By the way, do you know any other stages I would be really fit for? And sometimes they open up the door for you. Nice, nice. I think we seriously need to, to, to stop talking because there will be so much golden nuggets. They will be overwhelming. And then we have another problem. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love this, Dean. You really gave us like a behind the scenes in, okay, how does it work from the perspective of an event organizer? And what can you do as a speaker, as someone who wants to share your message, share your mission, impact a wild, wild um, number of people? What can you do to come a step closer to there? What can you do to get on those stages? What can you do? to make the life of an event organizer easier and therefore be maybe referred to other stages used again on other platforms um, because you just did an incredibly great job. And so did you today. I so appreciate your time. Thank you so much for sharing this all. Um, you made everyone one step closer to that, to that impact that they're looking for. So well, thanks a lot. You make it so easy, Lori. And um, for those that don't know me, I actually learned from Lori. And she's an amazing coach. So if you want to get out of your kitchen, this is the girl. <laughs> I appreciate you. It's a bit disgusting. Like uh, the, the compliment is a bit framed in a disgusting way, but I so appreciate this. Yeah. And you are going to rock the big stages very soon. And I'm so thrilled to be on that journey with you. So thanks. And uh, see you with the others. So ciao. Wow, we're at the end of this episode already. But it's not the end end. Because the goal of this episode is to get you impact. To grow your business, increase your influence and to land your stages. Maybe even a TEDx. So let's implement. In the description, you will find the link to my free 14-day speaking habit training where you train your public speaking muscle for two weeks straight. So go there right now and sign up and hit that subscribe button too. Why not? You never ever have to miss a single episode. And that's why I can say now, see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.